Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jennifer Glatzofer, but you can call me Jen. I am a musical theatre performer and a voice teacher. And today I am joined by the wonderful Ethan Drew. Say hello. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> I'm really excited. We are going to be breaking down Jeff Castellucci's Shenandoah. I have not listened to this. You have not listened to his version. I have heard his version, but it's been a while. And it's been a while. Um, yes, <laughs> so. Really excited. I'm sure there's going to be lots of fun uh, low note moments because <laughs> well, I'm going to attempt them uh, and you are going to smash them out. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> but as always, this is a reaction and an analysis video. So we will be stopping and talking about the vocals and not just me, we both will be, um, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. But if that's not your type of thing, then feel free to click off of this video. That is okay. But if you do enjoy what I do over here, then please do consider checking me out over on Patreon. The link can be found in the description below as well as Ethan's so you can go and follow him over on Patreon as well. Much appreciated. We will be filming this reaction over here and then another reaction and analysis over on Ethan's channel so do go and watch that once that is out as at this moment in time we're not sure <laughs> when that will be <laughs> but yes you'll be getting two videos from us which is really exciting. Hit that subscribe button and the bell button and let's get to Shenandoah. There we go. wearing the same outfits in this one. Did we get like a little trail off of that one as well? Yes. <laughs> so he bottomed out at a uh, G1 in Chester. Oh, so <laughs> look at that. Oh, and lovely uh, M connection. Gone. So yours. he started that. He started that slide at a D two and uh, slid down to a G one. It's um the <laughs> the proper music term for a slide, by the way, guys, is called a glissando. Nice terminology. We love that. Um, yeah, really, really lovely. I mean, um, I know we've both talked about an um connection. <laughs> um, it's mm -hmm. really, really lovely. I just love that kind of beginning. It's it's it's. it's I mean, I love it anywhere in a, in a performance, in a, in a song, but I think there's something so special about mm -mm right at the beginning because it just kind of like sets the tone for the piece, allows you to kind of feel that um, vibe of the piece. Let's keep... Sorry, did you have something to say? I was just going to say a passing mention should be made to how effective an um vowel actually is for warming up your vocal cords, folks. Yeah. So if, if you ever go to sing anything, an um vowel on any kind of vocality, any, any kind of singing that you plan to do, an M vowel before you do it, if done correctly, will warm up your vo vocal cords in a very clean fashion. It, it's a good, it's a good thing for it. It's just a good way to kind of like check in if you're not too heavy on the vocal folds or not too breathy on the vocal folds. Just get everything working together. And it's actually an SOVT exercise, so a semi occluded mm -hmm. vocal tract, uh, which is really, it's a lovely thing to strengthen your voice. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you just that's a that's an A1. Up. Yeah, wow. Like that's the that's the first um open vowel sound that we have, right? <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> straight away giving us the shock <laughs> yes for <Love> sure along to see Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> These are such long phrases. Um, yes. And like, you know, his beautifully singing in like a legato long way as well. But it's just, I think what's nice is like those end uh, words and notes just like held out. 
not coming off of them just and it's like not doing anything too fancy around them right it's just clear clean lovely connected notes so forward and so present it's just like so resonant in there isn't it it's just so lovely yeah and it's it's something else could, that should be uh, mentioned too is just the sheer amount of passion you can really hear in his voice in this cover it's not like it's it's not like he doesn't have passion in his other ones but you can kind of hear it in the way that he's carrying these phrases into one another if that yeah. makes any sense yeah, yeah, yeah. it's almost like he's building a sense of connection to the music just through the legato style and connecting all of the phrases the way he is and also musically there's just um, like on that pedal note right um mm -hmm. just kind of uh, he's carrying the melody but otherwise musically behind him is just <laughs> lightly there so he's continuing that melodic flow which is also really very low effort singing taking place here too it's this is his natural tessitura what he's this range that he's singing in here for those that don't know jeff he is a bass obviously but he's one of the more lower lying basses and this is his comfortable range yeah. and shenandoah is i've noticed at least in my experience that shenandoah is more of like a lighter voice it's covered by more lighter voices case in point for peter hollands's version of shenandoah but for some re odd reason, like sometimes you would think that a bass voice shouldn't cover a certain song because you 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 picture it thinking it you picture it you in your it mind you think it's you hear it one way, but then you hear someone with a different kind of voice cover and then then you just think that worked way better than I anticipated. <laughs> but that's such a nice surprise and nice like oh like because you, it's you're not expecting it to kind of you're so used to hearing it one way and then you're just not expecting it to be like oh, wait that actually works <laughs> it sounds yeah, so right yeah so lovely cool away we're bound away across the wide misery holds on to them so long. <laughs> yes. Ocean and oh, I love your Here we go. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> We're getting lovely flips and stuff a little bit. There was a slight little like break of the vocal fold connection right <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm not just yeah. hearing that <laughs> there's like a no. like a oh and also so contrasting to the first uh the uh section of the song first verse that we're ha hearing so many more like run like runs on the notes which is really lovely bringing a different sort of like you said lighter approach right <laughs> mm -hmm. this is what we're kind of yeah. used to this kind of area nice and for people that don't know, like bass singers don't typically sound this clean in their upper register. No, that's what's also so impressive, right? His vocal fold closure is so like great up there and the strength that he has up there to still maintain such clear sounds. It's like, Correct. yeah, madness. It is. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's go. Oh, and He's so well controlled with his riffs. That's nice. Held on to like the next kind of uh, phrase almost. and also it's like straight turn and a little bit broader right at the end, like just mm -hmm. to change that up as well. Oh, this is so lovely. And there was a lovely kind of chord progression that just happened in the last part of this little section that I kind of want to go back to. Um, oh, it's just a, such a different feel from the beginning. Uh, and and before this little section, actually, there was a little. Uh, like a little vocal fright into it, and vocal then he was, fry scoop, yeah. And then he was like, then he was up onto the 
lighter part. Uh, he uh, went up a whole octave there, guys. So the, <laughs> his original tessitura is that lower range, like you were hearing at the very beginning. Yeah. But in this section, he goes that octave up. I'm, it's an interesting choice to do, but we I mean, it works because, like I said, not all bass singers are able to swing this smoothly in their lower range. But given that we're listening to Jeff here, he's a bit of an exception in that regard. <laughs> Yeah, rules do not apply. <laughs> Sing Correct. wherever you want, do what you want, you'll sound great. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just so beautiful. And like you said, his riffs and runs, he's just got such control over his voice. Beautiful. That was a nice chord there. Yeah. Across the wide Missouri. <laughs> that was a great riff. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Let's just listen to that again because that was like that. Was, you could identify each and every step. It was so clean. <laughs> I was like, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's not often that you get someone that can riff that clean and be able to identify each pitch. That's what I mean. Like you know, it's so easy, especially if you're wanting to do it so fast, to just be like. And it still be like you can hear it, but like just to have that everything so distinctively there, each and every point, like that's so, like the agility is so good <laughs> in his yeah. voice and the control. Uh, I love it. Like when he gets lighter, there are elements of like breathy tones coming through, but otherwise it is mainly clear vocal fold uh, closure that we're getting. Um, but he just kind of like. Just this little part got a little bit like breathy at the top, so just adding a little bit of different color, which is just a nice, a nice difference. Yeah, definitely. Across the wide Missouri Ocean. <laughs> I love these echoing parts. Wait, 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 no. <laughs> there are so many good things happening. I love that he's kind of like conducting him himself. <laughs> he's kind of like doing this. <laughs> they a uh, rumor that or well, not a rumor, something that um, I kind of live by is like, if you have a singer that sings with their hands, like they're sitting there almost like conducting themselves, you can truly like understand how passionate they feel about what they're singing, even though for those that don't know, this is lip synced. This video is mm -hmm. lip synced to the audio. So yeah. even even though that's not the case, I still imagine that Jeff, when he was singing this recorded in the studio, I imagine he was still conducting himself because he's just that kind of singer where he kind of conducts himself in it when he's singing. And they say, well, a saying that I know and live by is that someone that conducts themselves when they're singing is truly passionate what they're singing about. It just, I think it's just because you want to make sure that everything is connected and involved. It's kind mm -hmm. of like you, it, they have a mind of their own almost. Like you're not, if you're, you know, when I'm singing this, I'm going to, then that's like different. But if you kind of just let it happen and let it be free, then of course they're kind of going to be involved because they're connected. And, you know, they, it, it, that's the whole point. That's like exactly right what you said, right? It's just, yeah. it's, it's, they, they are all part of the same thing. And also it's just, it's great anchor points at part, certain parts of songs as well. So it's just very much like needed to get like a point across or just feel a little bit more supported. But yeah, mm -hmm. I love, I love that he's, it's very floaty with where he's going with his voices. Anyway, mm -hmm. with, uh, with his voices, all of them. Um, it's, uh, so this is like, typical Jeff section, right? <laughs> like what he does here with these um, lovely layering. And yeah, like you said, the overlaying of the uh, the echoes of the words as well. Let's listen to this. Of that chord and then here <laughs> it just keeps going We 
<laughs> went into a little key change. Is that what's happening? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. <laughs> the thing with overlapping is kind of like, where's your hand? <laughs> There's so much to talk about. You're like, where to go? Oh, <laughs> so good. Vocal stacking, folks. Yes. It builds intensity to mm. a great degree. But it's it's just it builds up this wall of sound and whenever you're building volume and building intensity a good way to do it is through stacking voices and at this point in the song we've basically reached the climax given the given the volume but the one of the main ways to build that intensity is through stacking which is what he's doing here it's yeah it's it's there are so many different techniques and tools that we can use and that's like you said like that's what that's what's happening here it's just layering we can feel something's coming uh and also the we went from such legato kind of lines with the backing vocals and now we're getting kind of like staccato stop like on unpredictable moments in the in the background right so it kind of that also is kind of like wait (laughs) what's Mm -hmm. going on i'm feeling like this isn't what why is this not sounding like it did before like you know it just it's bringing us to a different section of the song i there was like a such an abrupt uh like glottal offset almost it kind of started breath led and then it kind of like <laughs> attacked off i don't know where it was let's see if we can the so, like you know we get that lovely growth uh away where was it And then just off. The across the way, across the way, and then across the across the across the key change. Oh. <laughs> I love that rip. Again here, like we're playing with different kind of phrasing in the back. And I just want to notice, say on the word river, here now we're way more like, uh, na na river, where do we end in there? Um, Way more brighter on the ver part, right? Because mm-hmm. he's way, he's like a lot more higher in his uh, range as, he, as opposed to when he was like way down there, which was mm-hmm. more of a river right just elongating that vocal track getting it a lot more darker so now we're just like spreading that just to it gets us way more thicker um where are we on there uh, is it c sharp was that where it was we're right uh, back again i don't remember we're gonna be oh yeah b yeah, yeah. reverse as he goes da da like right up there right um it's just way more wider than before, way more open just to get that kind of thicker sound. And you just lift it. That's just like a nice tool as well, just to brighten up a sound or equally like the river making it pouty just to darken that sound. Uh, and I love, do you know, I like that even though we've gone through a key change, he's still maintaining this overlapping, echoing sort of thing. So that's a theme that's continued as we've progressed through this section. Absolutely. Of the song. So that's, you know, even though things are changing, things are also still the same like it's still following the same sort of uh pattern which is nice <laughs> where is that <laughs> f sharp one that's in full chest by the way wow <laughs> that's the, at this point i've been telling my audience this for a while now but like jeff's fans and a lot of people are just waiting for him to have that f1 in chest we i don't know the, of a time where i've actually heard him sing a full-blown f1 in chest but we know he's come pretty close several times, especially here with this F sharp. Like he's only half step away from getting that F one. We're waiting on it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's, I think what highlights it here in this moment is, be- and you can hear it so like clearly, right? It just like, comes mm-hmm. out, but like the opposite, we have that right at the bottom and then such lovely thin fold, you know, heart, head voice kind of just floating up there as well. So it just creates this space, this kind of, well, the complete opposite side of where we are <laughs> at the bottom. Right. Uh, so that really highlights that section. Well, we're looking forward to this. What was it? An F 
one f sharp one this is an f sharp but like yeah <laughs> crazy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was like it, it was going so interestingly anyway and then there was like like just one little extra sneaky little isn't kind of in there it was just really nice you know jeff and his creativity having to sneak in some extra things there i know like it kind of feels so like coral led and just like la la pretty like and then oh hold on <laughs> almost barbershop like uh style yeah really really nice and just i love the descending of it but we, you know we had that big which is also something that helps us, right? <laughs> we've had a key change. We've modulated it up. Uh, and now as we come to the end of the song, it's just everything kind of descending and falling and just really kind of beautifully sat there. That's so pretty. Yes, it is. The wide <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Oh, and then ending with this solo, Jeff. Oh, so good. A, a passing mention should be made, by the way, to the restraint that, that Jeff has exercised in his arrangement for this. Me personally, if you're going to take a really beautiful piece like this, and you're going to do a version of it and you're basing your, I don't think you, it's appropriate to really go smashing a ton of low notes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's very well executed. I mean, it's, I mean, like it's, it's got some in there and he's still fulfilling, you know, his expectations as being a bass singer, having some nice yeah. lows, but it's not, it's not too much. No, I think, I think that's absolutely right. Like, you know, he, it's always so well deserved, but it's not like too much that we're like, oh yeah, okay, we get it. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not just like, yeah, you know, it's still a low bass or uh, bass singer cover. That's what he calls it, but it's yeah. it doesn't have to all be down there <laughs> for it right, to be yeah. a bass singer cover. It is because we get elements of that, and he sneaks in there or he showcases it in areas, and it sounds and it's just rightly put, and it's not over overdone. He uh, he has a he has this. He's known for doing what the music needs yeah. and then fulfilling the expectations as a low bass singer. He, it's a good thing that he really places the emphasis on what the music needs whenever he's doing it or his arrangements, because that's what makes him the good singer and arranger that he is. Yes, very much agree. Uh, I thought that was really beautiful. <laughs> I, I thought love that it. was so pretty. Um, and yeah, just the, the growth of it all. Really nice. Right. wonderful like wonderful. it's it a wonderful piece of music it's an age piece of music but i mean it's just it's still such a classic like if people cover it like i don't care who covers it it's always going to be good <laughs> you're always going to open it and watch it knowing that you're going to be leaving <laughs> in a happier place right. uh yeah really really lovely right well thank you for joining me today it's Thanks been for having so me. lovely <laughs> i love having you know it's really nice being like what note is this and rather than me being like <laughs> where is it you're like oh that is and i'm like yes <laughs> that is uh no it's been really really lovely just getting your insights on this on jeff's shenandoah and likewise it's been really really interesting but thank you so much for watching everyone uh if you did enjoy it please go and hit that subscribe button the bell button and the thumbs up button do go over and check me out on patreon do go over and check out ethan on patreon the links are in the description below he's over here hence why i'm <laughs> pointing over here don't know where he's <laughs> somewhere here um but yeah do go over and check us both out and we shall see you go over and check out our reaction over on ethan's channel when that comes out but we'll see you very soon thank you very much bye see you later ladies and gentlemen see ya <laughs>